Greetings. Welcome to Mount Olive Army Church, 4630 Old State Road, broadcasting live on Sunday, February the 14th, 2021, in Holly Hill, South Carolina, where our pastor is the Reverend Malcolm O. Simpson. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say praise the Lord. Let every blessed heart say hallelujah. Truly, and indeed, it is a blessing to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. If you want to give the Lord praise right where you are, amen. amen. If you're in your kitchen preparing your breakfast for your family, give the Lord praise right there in the kitchen. If you are watching this live stream from your bedroom, give the Lord praise while you are watching in your bedroom. If you're sitting in your living room, give the Lord praise because we are yet alive with the blood still running warm in our veins. And therefore, we do give honor to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, for he's indeed the head of all of our lives. To our wonderful ministerial staff right here at Mount Olive Avenue Church, to the Reverend Linda Sumter, to the Reverend Eloise Hart, to Brother Robert Myers, amen, I sent you here on our ministerial staff, amen, to this wonderful First Lady, the prettiest First Lady in all African Methodism, amen, of Mount Olive Avenue Church, Sister Michelle Yvette Simpson who is the advisor of the WMS, amen, as well as the YPD, amen. But we just thank you all so much this morning for joining us for worship. First, I want to say happy Valentine's Day to each and every one of you, amen, who are watching this morning. I know that the flowers have already been presented along with the candies and the sweetness given to our loved ones, amen. So a happy Valentine's Day unto you. Also, we are celebrating Founders Day. This is the day that we remember that the AV Church, the African Methodist Episcopal Church, came into existence, amen. And so our bishop has put it upon each and every local church to do something special for Founders Day in reflection thereof. So there's going to be a Founders Day mission slash Valentine's Day celebration going here, going on here at Mount Olive Amy Church. Before I get into my announcements, I just want to thank our YPD president, uh, Sister Tracy Pelzer, amen, working very hard here at Mount Olive Amy Church. I also want to thank our WMS president, amen, Sister Bernice Howell, amen. They too work very hard, amen. And they keep our children energized and activated and working in our ministry. I'm just so elated and I am glad to have them on my staff to help me with this wonderful ministry here at Mount Olive Amy Church. So, these little packets were put together just for you, Mount Olive Amy Church. So, from 12 up until 1 o'clock, amen. Come by and get this wonderful care packet for Valentine's Day that has been prepared just for you so that you can see that Mount Olive Amy Church remembered you on Valentine's Day. Amen. Amen. So we want to be a sweetheart unto you. Amen. Now these are our announcements. Wednesday night church school is canceled for this Wednesday uh, due to our joint Ash Wednesday service uh, with Brown Chapel Amy Church at 7 p.m. Amen. A link has been sent to the pastor uh, from Reverend Dr. Hal Wilson of Brown Chapel Avenue Church. Uh, we came together, we decided that we wanted to unite to start off lit season. We are in a season of fasting and praying. I want you to decide. I want you to pray first and ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want me to give up for you during this lit season? that we might grow closer and walk closer with one another during this Lent season. 
Slit season is a season of great miracle and power. Some of you right now have received promotions that you've been trying to get for a very long time. And guess what? That's coming from the Lord already fulfilling his promise before lit season actually started. Someone's going to get set free. Someone is going to get healed during this lit season. And so lit season starts on Wednesday, on Ash Wednesday. And normally we come together, we give the imposition of the ashes on your forehead uh, by way of putting a cross on your forehead and we recite the words from dust you came and for dust you shall return and we also say we believe and receive the gospel of Jesus Christ but unfortunately due to COVID-19 it would not be safe for us to come together in person so this year we're going to have a virtual worship service with Brown Chapel Amy Church on Ash Wednesday at 7 p.m. The link has already been sent to our church secretary, and she should be sending it out to you so that you can join us uh, for our Ash Wednesday worship service. Also, there will be a flyer that's going to be made to be posted on our Facebook page so that you can stay, uh, stay well abreast as to when the worship service will be, what time it will begin with the link information for those who may not be a member of Mount Olive Amy Church. For those who may not be a member of Brown Chapel Amy Church so that you can join us on Wednesday evening. The Orangewood District Conference is scheduled for next Saturday at 9 a.m. Please forward your names and email addresses to me, your pastor, so that I can forward that information to our presiding elder so that he can register you for sessions that we have throughout the Orangewood District Conference on next Saturday. Brother Devin Barry is the week one winner of Black History Trivia. Let's give the Lord some praise. Amen. Amen. Last month we had an MLK uh, trivia for every Sunday. And so we're transitioning into Black History Month because this is Black History Month. And Brother uh, Delvin Berry is the very first winner of that Black History Trivia. Amen. And you will receive a prize today, I believe. Amen. Once you come to church this afternoon, uh, to let you know that we appreciate you thinking very hard and answering that question. Also, on next Sunday, we do have a Black History program scheduled for next Sunday during morning worship. All of our young people have been engaged and given assignments to prepare them so that they can participate during our Black History worship service on next Sunday. Parents, make sure that all your children are properly prepared by memorizing the information that they need to present as well as dress as the person that they're presenting the information about when they come on next Sunday. We want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you for participating in our Super Bowl of caring. Give yourself a hand. And the reason I ask you to give yourself a hand, we collected 144 packets. That's like three cups in a pack. 144 packs of cup of soup to donate to a special organization that reaches out to those persons who are less fortunate in our community. On this past Friday, the pastor took all those packets, all those, those 144 packages of cups of soups down to CS, CASA Family Services in Orangeburg, South Carolina, so that we can help those who are less fortunate. Give yourself some praise. Amen. For we are that church. We're interested in and trying to do all we can for the community. This is just the beginning, and we're looking forward to do more great things to reach out to the community. Also, COVID-19 testings are still scheduled every month, and the next test will be scheduled on February the 25th. Um, also, I met with the class leaders on this past week, amen, and so I said that I was going to have uh, some poems to give to the class leaders so that we can update the membership role, but unfortunately, we know that anything that man will make will certainly fail, so I tried to print uh, those poems this morning, and the copy would not cooperate with the pastor. Uh, but don't be alarmed. Uh, be patient. I will make sure that you will get uh, those forms so that you can get them to your members so that we can collect all your information on those forms so that we have accurate information. So the past can call you, send your text blasts and things of that nature. Also on that form, the bishop wants to reach out to all of our members. He wants to call you. He also wants to remember you on your birthday. 
by sending you birthday cards and remembering you on your anniversaries by sending you wedding anniversary cards. So we need you all to cooperate with your class leaders. And class leaders, I need you to cooperate with your pastor so that we can get those done. Amen? Sick and shut in. We continue to lift all of our sick and shut in members all over the church. Amen. We're still praying for Brother Walter Brown. We're still praying for Brother Margaret Wright. We are still praying for Brother Harry Schuler. Amen. Who is the father of Sister Deidre Oliver. Amen. We're continuing to pray for Sister Lily Hillier. And we're steadily, steadily pray, praying for Sister Evelyn Oliver and her family. Brother Kenneth Pelzer has been added to our prayer list. And he's not feeling well right now. So we want to continue to pray for him. He's also grieving right now because he's suffering the loss of his grandmother. Amen. It's his time now. But guess what? Your time will come. And all you have to do is live and it will be your time. Amen. And that concludes all of our announcements. Amen. And we are transitioning back into the worship experience. Amen. And we're going to worship the Lord by giving. Amen. So it is our custom that if you have your offering in your hand, your envelopes, raise it up in your hand. If you are going to worship the Lord uh, electronically, lift up your electronic device. If you're going to give by Givenify, the link is right there on our screen, on our live stream, that you may give back unto the Lord electronically. The Lord does not discriminate in the way that you give back unto him. Giving is a way of worship. The Bible says that if you give, it shall be given unto you. So hold your offering up in your hand. Hold up your electronic devices if you're giving by way of Givelify. And trust and believe in the Lord that he is going to bless you in a special way on this Valentine's Day slash Founders Day. Let us pray. Lord, we want to say thank you for being so good to us. That you have blessed us with everything that we have. The home and the cars and the clothes on our back and the food on our table. Lord, we thank you for it all. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be able to earn an honest day's wage, oh God. Lord, you didn't have to give us the strength and the energy to do it, but you did it anyhow. And Lord, as that hand is being raised and held high, oh God, Lord, we ask you not only to look at the offering, but look at the health of that person. Regulate their vital signs, their blood pressure, and their, and, and their sugar, oh God. Regulate all their vital signs. If there's sickness, in the body of the hand that's being held up right now, God, heal them right now in the name of Jesus. And as you work on their health right now, God, look at the gifts that we brought unto you as an act of worship. We ask you, Lord, to bless this offering, that it might be used, that it might be used, oh God, that it might be used for the upkeep and the building of your kingdom. Bless it right now in the name of of Jesus the Christ we pray. The saints of God all said, Amen. Amen. Now I am ready to see our young people. We have upgraded our worship services so that they will be most, most enjoyable. Amen. Uh, this is the part of the worship service that I enjoy more than anything. Watching our children come with their gifts and talents as an offering unto the Lord. So first, we're going to have a praise dance this morning by Sister Carrie Summerson. Amen. And then we're going to have a song of praise. Amen. A dynamic duo. Amen. Sister Michaela and Sister Kirsten Rush, along with Brother Jalen Fuller, playing the organ behind them as they sing of the pastor. They will come in that order. And the pastor will return for, with a word from the Lord. Let us give these children some praise as they come forth and give God their best praise.
Let's give these children some more praise. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Amen. Let's give Sister Kirsten some praise. Sister Michaela, let's give her some praise. Amen. Brother Jalen playing the keyboard. Let's give him some praise. Amen. Sister Carrie doing the praise dance. We give her some praise. Amen. Give yourself a hand. Hallelujah. Because God has blessed you with hands that you might give him away praise. That you're able to clap your hands. You know there's someone that is racking in pain right now that they wish that they could do what you can do with your hands. But look at you right now. God has allowed able to move your fingers and move your hands. He's allowed you to be able to move and give him praise. And I don't know about you, I'm glad that God has been so good that he would give us the strength just to give him praise. The protocol has been thoroughly established. And the theme of the day has already been set. Today is part Lover's Day, Valentine's Day. Yeah, 
other half is Founders Day, loving our history where the Lord has brought us from. So let us pray. Lord, thank you for creating an opportunity to show and share love. Lord, thank you for creating this occasion just to be able to look back at our church and remember where you brought us from. Thank you, Lord, for creating this sign that we might be able, Lord, that we might be free to worship you in spirit and in truth. For, Lord, it wasn't always this way, but, God, we thank you for allowing us, oh God, to be able to assemble and worship when I have not, 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 but I'm not, but I'm not having to worry about someone interfering with us in our prayer time because they thought we were in the wrong place to pray. Thank you, Lord. We love our church because, Lord, you gave it to us and we love you. For it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. The saints and the children of God said, Amen. Amen. Right where you are, before I even get into the message, I want you, I want to hear you say, I love my church. I love my church. And you can say that with all your heart. Sometimes we spend so much time trying to find what's wrong with the church. But let me tell you something. The church is not this building that's made out of brick and mortar and carpet and pews. It's not the building. The church is you. It's us. Blood running warm in our veins. But Jesus said, when two or, two or three gathered together in my name, there he is in the midst. That's church. And I don't know about you, I'm not going to let anything stop me from loving my church. I love where the Lord has planted me. But there is so much heritage and wonder-working Holy Ghost power in this church. It took power to get us to the point where we are right now. And if you don't know the history of your church, I want to teach it to you this morning. Because I came to get the, get the African Methodist Episcopal Church a Valentine's Day card to let this church know I love you so much. There's nothing you can do to change it. But let us go to the let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 13. We're going to read verses 1 through 3. Acts chapter 13. We will read verse. One through three. And I'm going to be reading from the NIV version, the New International Version, for clarity. And it reads this way Now, in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene. You know, Cyrene is over in North Africa. So if you need to find any hints that there's some black people in the Bible, here it is. Cyrene, which is in North Africa. Manan, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. Fasting is associated with praying. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted, associated with praying rather, after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Barnabas and Saul, they were sent off to start churches of the places. Pray with me as I use for a Founders Day thought slash Valentine's Day thought. 
the church that started on its knees. The church that started on its knees. I'm talking directly to you, AME Church. Because that is the exact truth. That is how we started on our knees. Yes, Founders Day. Founders Day is upon us. And as this pastor, I'm a pastor of one of the historical African American church, Amen. Mount Olive Amy Church. I found myself reflecting on where the Lord has brought us from. Every once in a while, you need to go back and look at where the Lord brought you from as a church. You know, I'm remembering when I grew up in that old wooden board church called Emmanuel Amy Church. It's a nice, pretty, pristine brick church now, but I grew up in the old wooden church where they used to hitch up the windows and when it was hot because we didn't have air conditioner in the church. My age is telling on me right now. I may not look at that old, but I was reared up in a wooden board church. I remember walking in through the front door. The, the, the floor was walked, you know, because the church stood on tree stumps. You know, that's how they built wooden churches back then. They had them on tree stumps. The church was off the ground. And I was so short that you could run under the, I could run under the church without even bending over, even knocking my head on the bottom of the church. But that's how the church was built back then. I can remember opening the door and walking in the church. You can see the floor going down and going up. Hallelujah. That's the church that I remember. But we didn't pay any mind that we didn't have air conditioner. And we didn't pay any mind that we had the heaters on the corners of the church at the time. But, but the church at that time, we praised the Lord by like we lost our mind. But every once in a while, you need to reflect on where the Lord brought you from. And in the midst of planning and in the preparation of this day, I personally remember uh, the plans to start our Zion. Uh, it actually began with our founder, Richard Allen, and others who were on their knees during a worship experience. Hallelujah. We all know what they were doing on their knees, right? What do we do when we get on our knees? You know, yes, you guessed it. If you figure it out, you guessed it. They uh, were in deep, intimate prayer with the Almighty. They were praying in the church, right? And now I, I don't know what they were saying to God during their prayer time. Because, you know, prayer is about you communicating with the Lord. It's about you pouring out your heart to God. It's about you making your supplications and petitions uh, knowing to God. It's about you asking the Lord to forgive you of your sins. I don't know what they were praying for during their prayer time, but I, I, I can't help but to think that they desired to be in a state of freedom that would allow them to worship God without limitation or restrictions. And God's response to their prayer, perhaps, uh, was a hand perhaps putting them over their knees uh, because they were not allowed to kneel and pray with their white brethren at that time. I'm just going to tell the truth, church. I mean, the history of this country is not pretty. We need to look at it for what it was and what it is. We were slaves in a church you know, have you ever seen the movie Roots? And have you ever looked at those stories how the slaves would be up in the balcony and they stood and they looked down in the church while they were worshiping? I'm going to uncover some some some, 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 some traditions that we are still doing that we need to eliminate right now. They were up there in the balcony and the slave masters were hammers in the balcony so that they could keep their eyes up on the slaves so the slaves would not escape so they had them in the church hallelujah they even had us working in the church you know uh, you know the, the white gloves on the usher's hands can us just reveal a little bit of history uh, some stuff that we're still doing on slavery uh, that we need to put it into right now uh, the ushers used to be given the black ushers the slave ushers uh, used to wear white gloves when they walked through the church uh, 
to receive the offerings from the slave masters. Uh, they used to put one hand behind their back uh, and they used to have the collection pan in their hand. Uh, the one hand behind the back uh, was, was an instruction given to them because uh, the slave masters did not trust the slaves uh, not to take any money out of the pan. Uh, and so they walked with their hands behind, one hand behind their back, uh, and the collection pan in the hand going down the aisle. Uh, and they gave the collection pan to their slave masters uh, with their hand behind their back. And we're still doing the same thing today. I'm going to preach it this morning uh, because the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us uh, it's time for us to wake up and make a change. Uh, stop doing things uh, that the Holy Spirit didn't authorize you to do. Uh, but they would have their hands behind their backs uh, and we're still doing the same thing today uh, that we used to do when we were slaves. Uh, what else were they doing in the church? You know, the white gloves. I know I just mentioned the white gloves. Uh, they used to give the, the, the gloves to the slaves uh, who were serving as ushers uh, because they didn't want to be touched by our bare skin. Uh, so they would give us gloves to put on our hands. Uh, white gloves on our hands. Uh, so if we accidentally touch them, uh, our skin wouldn't be touching them. Uh, but we still do the same thing today. Uh, and here is the thing that chides me a little bit. Uh, what is this one finger pointing up in the air? Uh, yes, some of us were still in the church. Uh, Putting up the one finger up in the air uh, when it's time for us to get up and go to the bathroom. Uh, you know, some of us, you know, we need to learn about our history uh, so that we can change the way we think and where we do things. Uh, so they would lift their fingers up in the church. Uh, and I don't like using this word, uh, but it's time for us to wake up and recognize uh, what was going on church uh, that we were slaves in. Uh, Y'all don't hear me this morning. Uh, you had not come to church uh, and not be able to say amen. Uh, when the Holy Spirit stirs you up, uh, you had not come to church uh, and be a slave in the place of worship. Uh, but our ancestors, they were in the church uh, and if they had to go to the bathroom, uh, can I tell service. Uh, when we had to go to the restroom, uh, let me clear my throat on this. Uh, because you need to hear this. Uh, when we lift up that one finger, uh, that means that one nigger uh, was getting ready to leave the worship service uh, to go to the bathroom. Because uh, they're trying to keep count of us uh, while we were still in the church. Uh, and here we are I know you need to have good etiquette uh, while you're in the sanctuary, uh, but God didn't say anything uh, about raising your finger uh, for you to get up and go to the bathroom. Uh, you just get up uh, and leave in the most respectful way. Uh, stop raising that one finger because it's the same thing uh, as calling yourself the inward uh, every time. Uh, and Richard White, uh, they're 
There are in restrictions according to man. See, man will put restrictions in place uh, because they try to keep you in your place. Uh, see, you don't need man to give you restrictions uh, to keep you in your place uh, if you know your place in the body of Christ. Uh, hallelujah, church. Uh, see, the Holy Spirit dropped that in my soul right now. Uh, see, when you're walking with Jesus, uh, you automatically line up with the Lord. Uh, you know what your place is. Uh, you know cross boundaries. Uh, so therefore, you don't need nobody to tell you nothing. Uh, when you read the Bible, uh, the Bible will tell you uh, where you fit in. Uh, the Bible will tell you uh, what's required of you. Uh, but here it is, Richard Allen uh, and Absalom Jones uh, and Richard Wright, they were down in the church uh, up in Pennsylvania. Hallelujah. They were up they were slaves at the time. Uh, let me tell you something, church. Uh, I don't care what situation you're in. Uh, you can be a slave, but guess what? Uh, the power of God is still real. Uh, and it will work in any situation. Uh, but don't you know God will? He will uh, use uh, the most difficult situation. Uh, Uh, see, it's not easy. 
to do your own thing. Now, so you got to remember uh, that they're still in slavery at this time. Uh, there's all kinds of oppression going on. Uh, they're trying to stop them from having their own things. Uh, black people couldn't read back then uh, because they weren't allowed to read back then. Uh, they were treated like property. Uh, so they couldn't have their own property. Uh, but let me tell you something, church. Uh, there's something about praying. Uh, are we in a season uh, of fasting and praying? Uh, this season uh, is coming this Wednesday. Uh, and if you haven't made up your mind, uh, how are you going to approach your prayer uh, season for 40 days? Uh, you need to make up your mind right now. Talking about preacher. Yes. <laughs> now I'm talking to those of you. 
you that like to go run to those mega churches. I'm not knocking anybody's ministry, but you like to go run to those churches that got 20,000 members in three churches. We got churches all over the world. We the real mega church. And so if you want to be a part of something, if you want to be a part of something big, if that's your thing, hey, come on and join the Miami church if that's your thing. But let me tell you something. You know, I don't join stuff because it's big and flashy. That's the problem. We join stuff that is big and flashy. But the Lord wants us to join something that he started out of sacrifice. This church, it was a sacrifice made by our ancestors to get to this point. Look at how the Lord built this thing. I'm pretty much done. But they were slaves with nothing but God. That should set your soul on fire. See, when you don't have anything that's more than enough for God, this church that's on its knees, guess what? When they were on their knees, their pockets were empty. When they were on their knees, they had no property of their own. But when they got up, guess what? The Lord made a way. You're a part of something. If you're a member of any one of our Amy churches all across this world, we're a global church. Be proud of where the Lord brought you from. Stop pointing at everybody else's water as if it's cooler than yours. Hallelujah. Your water is just as cold as theirs. And everything yeah, guess what? It's just as good as theirs. Why? Because God made it all. Hallelujah. And the Lord, the Lord is responsible for that. Now, the day is Valentine's Day, all right? I'm going to try to stay in the name of that. Amen? But as we get to the moment of decision, if you want to give the Lord a Valentine's Day gift, Hallelujah. Don't you like this? Giving the Lord a Valentine's Day gift? We go out and buy edible arrangements for our spouse, amen, and these nice flowers and cards. But we need to have the same attitude when it comes to our God. So if you want to give the Lord a Valentine's Day gift, why not give him your life? If you never accept Christ, Lord and Savior. Right here on this live stream. Give him a Valentine's Day gift by accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. Well, me and you've already accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you want to give Jesus a Valentine's Day gift by saying thank you for saving me so many years ago. And I'm going to love you for the rest of my life. Maybe you just want to say, Lord, I love you and I thank you for saving me years ago. You can do that right now. I thank the Lord every day for saving Malcolm Simpson. Not Pastor Simpson. Not Chaplain Simpson. Malcolm Simpson. He saved me before I got to that point. Don't wait to start telling the Lord to thank you when he starts advancing you in your life. Think about where you came from. He built you into the person that you are right now. Every step of the way, you can say, Lord, I don't know how I would have made it this far without you, but Lord, I thank you. Now you brought me this far. And we also want to pray for those who are sick and shut in. For those who are going through their hour of grief, standing either this morning. We're going to get on our knees and pray in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us close our eyes. I want you to think about what it was like for Richard Allen, Absalom Jones, and Richard White, and all those persons who were in Pennsylvania, church up in Philadelphia, during the slavery. Look at what they went through. But they still knew that prayer was the answer. Regardless of what they were going through, praying was not something that they stopped doing. They always prayed. 
So let us pray. Oh God, on this Father's Day, I'm so thankful for this African Methodist Episcopal Church that you saw it. God, this was not man's invention. Clearly, it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. You use a conflictual situation to birth into existence this great church. Every day, Lord, has not been easy. But through it all, Lord, you've been with us and it's been blessed. And Lord, we thank you for continuing to add to your church. And we pray, God, that you continue to bless everyone in the meditation of my prayer. First, I want to say thank you, Lord, for saving that person, oh God, on Valentine's Day. Lord, they've chosen to give you their heart on Valentine's Day. All wrapped and pretty, oh God. Offer to you. They've given their life to you today. And we thank you for saving them on this day. And Lord, those who have been saved for so many years, they offer their hearts anew to you, O Lord, on this Valentine's Day. They give your heart a gratitude for saving them for so many years ago, God, and keeping them, O God, in your care for bringing them from where you brought them from to now. And Lord, right now, those who are sick, oh God, on this day, Lord, it is your desire to give them a Valentine's Day gift, oh God, by healing them of their sickness. And Lord, we accept that Valentine's Day gift of healing in the name of Jesus. And all those who are going through their hour of bereavement, hallelujah, Lord, you decided to claim your Valentine's Day gift, oh God, by accepting those who've been faithful to you all their lives into your kingdom, into a room that's reserved for them, that they will live with you for all eternity, where love reigns and never ends. We thank you for it all, oh God. We praise you, Lord. We say happy Valentine's Day to you. And we love you, Lord. And we give you all of our heart, our soul, and our mind. Because it was you, oh Lord, that gave us your son, Jesus Christ, as a ransom for our sins. For it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. The saints of God said, Amen. Give the Lord praise right where you are. And as we prepare to go into this week, you know, I love my wife. That's one thing I love to do is to stand before people and tell them how much I love my wife. And I'm going to wait for that time to do something special for you. So those of you that are blessed to have a Ruth or a Boaz, love them every day. Amen. Buy them flowers all the time. Tell them how nice they look. And those of you that are still looking for your Boaz and your Ruth, amen. We love you and you're our Valentine today. Amen. God bless you. You have a sensational week.
watching. I pray that this service has been a blessing to you. Please join us on next Sunday at 11 a.m. God bless you.